Most of us have heard the fairy story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. What many of us don't know is that the legend is based in truth. There is very little evidence as to what actually happened in the German town of Hamelin during the 13th century. In 1384, a short and sinister entry appeared in one of the town's chronicles. It stated, It is 100 years since our children left. Oh dear. Welcome to Medieval Madness. The Legend. Firstly, we should briefly explain the story of the Pied Piper for the uninitiated. The version that appears in the book German Legends, written by the Brothers Grimm in 1816, tells of a man called the Pied Piper mysteriously appearing in the town of Hamelin, dressed in a multicolored coat. He claimed that he could rid the town of its rat problem for a sum of money. The people agreed, and playing a small flute or fife, the Pied Piper was able to lure the vermin into the river where they drowned. Now free of their infestation, the townspeople refused to pay the piper. Angrily, he left the town but returned on St. John and St. Paul's Day, the 26th of June, as either 7 a.m. or noon. He had changed his attire and was dressed in an all green hunter's costume and now wore a bizarre red hat. With a horrible look on his face, he played his fife, and instead of rats, the boys and girls of Hamelin came out of their houses to follow him. He led them up to the very heart of a hill where they disappeared. In Robert Browning's 1842 poem, The Pied Piper of Hamelin, A Child's Story, the children followed the piper to the river where they drowned, just like the rats. And in Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's poem, written in 1802, The Pied Piper, as well as playing a tune, the piper is a child catcher who sings his fairy song, charms the children like a viper, and they supposedly can't help but follow him. The Proof so, what really happened on the 26th of June 1284 in the town of Hamelin in Lower Saxony? The earliest mention is in the town records from 1384. Then, around the year 1300, which is only 16 years after the alleged abduction, a stained glass window was added to the St. Nikolai Church that stands in the central market of Hamelin. The window supposedly depicted an old figure of a man in coloured clothes and surrounded by a crowd of children. Unfortunately, the window was destroyed in the 17th century. But the inscription which was around the window has been reconstructed, and it reads, quote, In the year of 1284, on John's and Paul's day, was the 26th of June. By a piper dressed in all kinds of colours, 130 children born in Hamlin were seduced and lost at the cavalry near the Koppen. In German, Koppen means the knoll of a hill, and there are several hills around Hamlin. Which one the inscription was referring to is unknown. An early account of the event appears in the 15th century Lüneburg manuscript, along with five verses, some in Middle Low German and some in Latin. They all refer to the same story of 130 young people disappearing on the 26th of June 1284, after being led off by a Pied Piper to a place called either Koppen or Calvary. The rats seem to be a late addition to the tale, and there is a ring of truth to this in that during the mid-1300s, rats were regarded as pests in German towns. Vermin are always a problem whenever people live together in close proximity. According to the medical historian Stanley Aronson, they would burrow into bags of grain as well as other food sources. They were, quote, also destructive of wooden structures and clothing, and would occasionally attack sleeping young children. This would have hardly been an ideal situation, and if the problem became too extreme in Hamlin, it is possible that they would need the help of a rat catcher. The Dance of Death one hypothesis suggests that the children were killed by some sort of natural disaster, and that the piper wasn't real but merely an imaginary symbol of death, similar to the Dance Macabre or Dance of the Dead. This was one of the types of allegory often used in the Middle Ages, in which a narrative or visual device was used to symbolise death. The dance represented death as a unifying force that summoned people from all walks of life, rich and poor, young and old, to dance on the grave together. It's possible that if the children had all tragically died together for whatever reason, then the townsfolk might have used the idea of the piper as a coping mechanism. This could explain why they depicted the image on the church window as a symbol of unity in unspeakable loss. Scenarios fitting this theory include the children wandering outside of the town and being caught in some sort of landslide or mudslide, falling into a sinkhole, or drowning in the river Visor. The idea that the children died from starvation or some illness during an epidemic has also been suggested. Perhaps the thought of illness has come from the connection between rats and the Black Death. 
But that horrific disease didn't reach Europe until 1347, 50 years after the disappearance of the children. Perhaps the rats were added to the story later to provide a reason for the piper to be in the town. If an epidemic or famine was the reason for the deaths, then it would have happened over a longer period of time rather than a specific date. The Children's Crusades Thought to have taken place in 1212, this was a failed attempt by the Catholic Church using children to reach the Holy Land and convert the Muslims there to Christianity. There are two separate stories connected to the Children's Crusades, one about a French boy and one about a German boy. In the German tale, Nicholas, a young shepherd from the Rhineland, recruited a large group of children to travel on a crusade with him. After seeing Jesus in a vision, Nicholas believed it was not fighting but conversion that would defeat the Saracens. The children followed him, and many were either sold into slavery or just died during the journey. Is it possible that Nicholas was the Pied Piper? Historians are already a bit sceptical when it comes to the supposed children's crusades because of a lack of factual data, and many doubt that children were involved at all. The dates don't match up, and anyway, in the legend, the Piper is definitely depicted as a full-grown man and not a child. Maybe the children left Hamlin at a later time on some other religious pilgrimage. St. Vitus Dance According to Pied Piper Sleuths, another possible theory is that the Hamlin children became victims of the social phenomenon known as the Dancing Plague, which is also known as the St. Vitus Dance because it was thought to have been sent as a curse by the saint. This was a strange event that occurred between the 14th and 17th centuries in Europe and involved groups of adults and children erratically dancing. Coincidentally, one of the first major outbreaks was in the city of Aachen in the Holy Roman Empire, which is now modern-day Germany. This dancing could go on for days until people collapsed and even died from exhaustion. The cause of these dancing mania outbreaks is still unknown, but just like with the Pied Piper, various theories have emerged. Mass hysteria, ergo poisoning, and collective epilepsy are just a few. These epidemics are well documented and the dancing was often accompanied by a musician. Could the Piper have whipped up the children into some sort of collective hysterical dance and then taken them off somewhere? Perhaps they then fell into a sinkhole or drowned after being lured away. In 1278, 200 peasants were uncontrollably dancing en masse on a bridge over the River Meuse when the bridge inevitably collapsed. Many of the dancers drowned. Could this have been the origin of the Pied Piper story as some believe? It would give a reason for the children's deaths and the Piper's presence, but there is no concrete evidence for this theory. Bought and sold. The Middle Ages are well known as a time of hardship and peasants had it particularly bad. During the High Middle Ages, there was a massive population increase across Europe and between the 11th and 13th centuries, the Kingdom of Germany had grown from 4 to 12 million people, and children cost money to feed. At the same time, Slavic princes and regional lords encouraged the Germans to come and settle in their lands in Eastern Europe. Could the Piper have been an immigrant recruiter from the East? It wasn't unusual for children to be bought and sold at the time. This theory also links in with a lack of solid accounts for the incident and with a large group of children suddenly leaving together with the Piper. If the townspeople had sold their children or even just given them away, did they later regret their actions and feeling guilty, commission the window to be made to help alleviate their guilt? Perhaps the children weren't sold, but simply moved east for a better life, and the Piper was a sort of headhunter sent to find those who wanted to emigrate. Similar surnames from Hamlin appear in Poland and Transylvania, areas known to be colonized by Germans. Could the children have actually been young adults in need of jobs? At the time, men known as locators, who were said to have worn multicolored robes, went from town to town persuading people to travel east to find their fortunes. But if this was genuinely the case and was happening all over Germany, why was it regarded as such a huge thing in Hamlin? So huge that they had to build a stained glass window to commemorate the act. And why did the window depict small children rather than teenagers? A disturbing conclusion. In the modern day town of Hamlin today, the Pied Piper has become a cottage industry. Local actors put on a Piper play during the summer months, restaurants serve rat tails dishes, and bakers make rodent shaped cakes. There is even a man dressed as the notorious flute player to take eager tourists on a tour of the medieval streets. On one particular street though, there is a long existing law that bans anyone from playing any sort of music or singing. It is called Bungalowsenstrasse, or the street without drums, and is said to be the street where the children were last seen before they were led away. Whatever really happened that day in Hamlin in 1284, the Pied Piper has gained a disturbing reputation. Whether this was always the case remains a mystery, and no one theory over who he was or where the children went seems to make complete sense. 
Thank you for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please hit that subscribe button if you like these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!